True. Nervous. Dreadfully nervous have been and am. But why will you say that I'm mad? Hearken and observe how calmly I can tell you the whole story. It is impossible to say how first the idea entered my brain, but once conceived, it haunted me day and night. Object, there was none. I love the old man. For his goal, I had no desire. I think it was his eye. One of his eyes resembled that of a vulture. A pale blue eye with a film over it. Whenever it fell upon me, my blood ran cold. And so I made up my mind to take the life of the old man and thus rid myself of the eye forever. He should have seen how wisely I proceeded. I was never kinder to the old man than during the whole week before I killed him. And every night about midnight, I turned the latch of his door and opened it. Oh, so gently, I put in a dark lantern so that no light shone out. And then I thrust in my head. I moved it slowly, very slowly, so that I might not disturb the old man's sleep. And then, when my head was well into the room, I undid the lantern cautiously, so that a single thin ray fell upon the vulture eye. This I did for seven long nights. Upon the eighth night, I was more than usually cautious in opening the door. A watchman at hand moves no more slowly than did mine. When I had waited a long time, very patiently, I resolved to open a little crevice in the lantern until at length, a single dim ray, like the thread of a spider, shot out and fell upon the butcher eye. It was open, wide open, and I grew furious as I gazed upon it. A dull blue with a hideous veil over it that chilled the very marrow of my bones. Now there came to my ears a low, dull, quick sound such as a watch makes when enveloped in cotton. It was the beating of the old man's heart. He increased my fury as the beating of a drum stimulates a soldier into courage. A new anxiety seized me. The sound would be heard by a neighbor. The old man's hour has come. With a loud yell, I threw open the lantern and leaped into the room. He shrieked once, once only. In an instant, I dragged him to the floor and pulled the heavy bed over him. But for many minutes, the heart beat on with a muffled sound. At length, it ceased. I removed the bed and examined the corpse. The old man was dead. <laughs> His eyes would trouble me no more. If you still think me mad, you will think so no longer when I describe the wise precautions I took for the concealment of the body. First, I dismembered the corpse. I cut off the head, the arms, the legs. Next, I took up three planks from the floor of the chamber and deposited all between the scantlings. I replaced the board so cleverly that no human eye, not even his, could have detected anything wrong. It was four o'clock, still dark at midnight. As a bell sounded the hour, there came a knocking on the street door. I went to open it with a light heart, for what had I to fear? There entered three men, officers of the police. A shriek has been heard by a neighbor during the night. Suspicion of foul play had been roused, and the officers had been disputed to search the premises. 
I bade the gentleman welcome. The street I said was my own, in a dream. The old man I mentioned was absent in the country. I took my visitors over the house and bade them search. Search well. I leave them at length to his chamber. I show them his treasures, secure and undisturbed. In the enthusiasm of my confidence, I brought chairs into the room and desired them to rest their fatigue while I myself placed my own seat upon the very spot beneath which reposed the corpse of the victim. The officers were satisfied. They sat and I answered cheerily. He chatted the familiar things, but ere long I felt myself getting pale and pushed him on. I fancied the ringing in my ears. I talked more freely to get myself rid of the feeling, but in continued at length, I found that the noise was not within my ears. I talk more fluently, with a heightened voice, yet the sound increased. It was a low, dark, quick sound such as a watch makes when enveloped in cotton. I paced the floor, but the noise steadily increased. Oh God, what could I do? I phoned, I raved, I swore, but the noise arose over it all. It grew louder and louder and louder. Was it possible they heard not? Oh, mighty God, no, no, they've heard. They suspected, they knew. They were making a mockery of my horror. I felt that I may scream or die. And now again, hark, louder, louder and louder. Villains! I shrieked. Dissemble no more. I had bit of a deed. Tear up his plans. Here, here. It is the beating of his hideous heart. 